Goodbye. Bye. Bye. And don't forget to behave yourself. Your school days. Love them. <laughs> or loathe them. Oh, I hate school! You never forget them. I am not going home. I want my education. You know, we've one minute to get in a lesson. Let's go. For the students at this school in Salford, life is never straightforward. He's on Tinder. What's, what's Tinder? Sorry. The dating website. So you see pictures. Oh. It's a school with a history. When I arrived, it was known as the worst in the UK, and that's one of those educational badges that people don't want. Get in and make sure you can see me and hear me. And it still has its fair share of challenges. It's your dad, boss. Hello. Matthew's looking at a minimum of eight years in prison. For God's sake. It's no good you being upset because that upsets the baby. But head teacher, Mr. Povey. Lesson time, learning time. And his team. <laughs> including his two brothers. Ross was here first, I came second, Ben came third. A turning its fortunes around. Yeah. I'm not letting you give up on your GCSEs. Why? Um, because, because I care too much. <laughs> I don't know the words. Find the perimeter of the triangle for me. Yes, yeah, 48, sir. Boom. In a tough year for education. I'm really worried about these results. With this budget, we're paying the price for how tight it all is. This is as bad as we've ever what's, seen. What's that I've ever seen? We film to find out what life is really like. You then say, Allahu Akbar. In one of our secondary schools. Google will not get you a GCSE. What's the capital city of Kenya? Nah. Nanya. <laughs> wow. So to the encoding, then? Turn left. Right. Hold on, I'll get mixed up on left and right, mate. Oh. Do you have some breakfast? Yeah, of course. No, you mean no, don't you? You need to eat some breakfast, Corda. Share my breakfast if you want. I'll let you. It's 8 a.m. on Wednesday morning. I'm only very quiet. It's windy at the end of the year. Harrotfold Student Development Officer, Miss Kay, is out in the local community. Quick, let me quick. Oh, my God, it's over there. Oh, God. The student development team, we have direct links with the community. We're part and parcel of the community. We go out all the time. We're always at people's houses. This is the junction where I failed my driving test the second time. I always have traumas driving through here. Quite a lot of our students' attendance is poor. We do have some who refuse to come to school. So our priority as a team is to make sure they're in school every day, they're ready to learn. Morning, Mia. You ready? So one of our jobs is to go and knock on the door, say, come on, get out of bed. I've been in many kids' bedrooms getting them out of bed. Part of the job. Morning, Julie. Morning. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. You'll be all right. Morning. Right. We've got everybody now. For got everyone in. He's saying he feels very sick and he's had nothing to eat since two o'clock yesterday afternoon. Did he have his tea? He had um, savoury rice. Miss Kay is one of five women who work in the student development team. They deal with any issue the students bring to their door. And then about nine o'clock, he come down and had two packets of noodles. So at nine o'clock last night, you had two packets of noodles. Is that right? Did you have two packets of noodles last night? One packet of noodles last night at nine o'clock. And then for your tea, you had savoury rice? Everything comes through our doors. It's because they fell out with a mate, they fell out with a boyfriend, the football team's lost, the dogs died, or they're upset and they don't know why they're upset. Right, you're in English. No, Margaret, I'm actually dying. Why, what's the way? I've got You can't die of period pain. No, you don't understand how bad they are. 
When I came to Harrop Fold, there wasn't the student development team, so we decided to have a non-teaching team, the education welfare officers, social workers, people from those kind of backgrounds to help support young people with their social emotional needs as well as their academic studies. Don't speak to me. You just stay there and chill. Right, what's the matter? This is giving me a rash. What's giving you a rash? This all being wet. That's not wet. No, it's wet here, wet my tight, all my tights are wet. A frequent visitor to the student development room is 12-year-old Caitlin. So what do you need, tights? I need to phone my mum. Right, OK, should we get her to bring you some tights in? You need a whole... tights. Why are you getting so upset over because a pair of tights? Because it's irritating me. Right, she's quite a challenging young lady. She's very emotional. When things go wrong for Caitlin, she overreacts. <laughs> Not really being able to understand how she's feeling, and she will just burst into tears. Hiya. Hiya, could you pop some um, a clean shirt and some tights over for Caitlin? I'm not as self-confident in year eight as I was in year seven. In year seven, I wouldn't care less what anyone says, but now I do. This is so weird. In year eight, puberty kicks in, and when the girls become hormonal, they don't always know how to deal with those emotions and those feelings. Being a girl in puberty hits is the worst thing ever. I wish puberty never existed. Could you think, oh, yeah, I'm going to wear this nice dress? And like me planning on going out, your sight period is why? I don't know how to say this without getting in trouble. <laughs> they bite your head off. Yeah, uh, the <laughs> mood swings are uh, atrocious. Right, put your hand up, tell me why it would not snow in the rainforest. It'll melt coming down. Wait, wait, wait. Why do you never let us speak? Somebody put your hand up, tell me why it is warm oh. in the rainforest. Why are you staring at me? Caitlin, Caitlin, do I need to send you outside? Just calm yourself down. Caitlin, Sydney, Sydney, Sydney. Me, Sydney. That's proper anger, I ain't right, no scared. Right, right, do you know what? I'm trying to do a lesson. Yeah, but he's calling me, you're scared. Do not say a word. Why are you looking at me? Caitlin, ignore other you're people. You're sick of people staring people at me. People are not staring at me, they're just looking around, that's all. Especially you there, okay, that little whatever she is. Right, Caitlin, go and stand outside. I'm not dealing with this. All lessons. Oh, go my stand. God. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Caitlin's outbursts are quite severe at times and quite frequent. There will be a point where she will be unmanageable if we don't get the right support for Caitlin. Oh, here's the lads. Hi, John. Hello, Angela. Hello, Bales. You've got a dead arm. We've got another arm. We're all born with two. Just use the other arm so that one comes back. I like having a chat to you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're very blunt. Blunt, bland. That's a new name, you know that? Blunt, bland. <laughs> Your mum reckons I'm going to be screaming place down. Most women don't really scream. I reckon one born every minute is dead fate. Do you? My mum said it as well. In what way? Like they get into the hospital as soon as they walk through the doors. Ah! As soon as you see the cameras. Ah! You don't hear much screaming. Not many women scream at all. And that's what that's what I'm trying to control it and like think, God, it's really hurting, but Year eleven Mia is seven months pregnant. My time at her at Fold, I think we've had four teenage girls get pregnant. That's the decision they make. We're not here to judge, we're here to support. Just because you're having a baby at 15 doesn't mean your life's over. It's not necessarily the best choice you've ever made in your life, and we're not gonna lie. Our priority is making sure she's ready for the exams, get good GCSEs to give her little baby girl a really good life. Look. Oh, my day! That's not even all of the clothes, Margaret. That's baby grows. That's vests and socks. I love babies. I want to be a brilliant mum. That's one of her smiling. Sticking her tongue out. It's one of the given dirty looks. She just looks just like me in this one. You can see a little pile of lips and a frowning face. The baby is due three months before Mia will take her GCSEs. 
The school's plan is for her to return to take her exams after the birth. Being a pregnant girl, there is a worry that Bebe will take over her concentration on her schoolwork. It's how we as a school handle that distraction and how Mia realises the importance of her exams because this decision affects the rest of her life, really. But everything started at all. Everything? Everything. Having a baby's got to be more important than school because a child's a big deal. It's not just something to be cast aside and go and do other things. Have a chat with her. We don't think she's in labour, don't worry. Hello. Hello. When, what time's your last exam? Um, 35 minutes past one. Today, the Year 11s have their maths mocks. But Mia is refusing to sit the exam. You've got to do your exams, Mia, so you have to stay in school and do your exams. I didn't say I didn't, but I can't concentrate because it hurts. Yeah, you will do, because it's Isla, Mia. She's growing, what do you expect? You try sitting in the room for an hour and a half in pain doing an exam. Right, well, I told you to undo your jeans, make I sure you've got plenty of water. I've done sat down. Right, well, it happens, Mia, you're going to be in much more pain than that when labour starts, so you can stay in school and finish you're your exams. You're not even bothered. I am bothered, I'm just telling you. Hello? Hello? My partner will say, she's you. She gets her attitude from you, and I'll say, I wasn't like that, I wasn't that bad. Surely it wasn't that bad. Mia? But really, I was terrible at school. I was horrible. I <laughs> was. I wish I'd have done my exams and then gone to college, but I was 17 when I got caught pregnant with Mia. I don't want her to turn out like I did. You said next time you see me, you're going to bet me to go on. <laughs> Why do you try? Why are you saying that, me? It's break time, and there's an incident involving Caitlin and another student. Sir, you might have sort of oh. now before you absolutely smash a little lead in. Say you're going to ban me at dinner, why don't you do it now? Go on. Oh, she's hanging. I'm waiting there now. Caitlin, you can be difficult to handle. Oh, yeah. And then she knows it. Hey, where are you going? Hey! Well, are you going in there with her? She's going in there over there, no, but I'll throw you in front of everyone. Get over there now. She's Stop lovely one to one. If she's in that mood, she'll just explode. You've got to try and calm her down, but she can be that irate sometimes and, and that annoyed. You know, it's difficult. Get in there. When I get angry, it's like a snowball. It's at the top of the hill, and then it rolls down and gets bigger and bigger, cos, like, always my temper dead quick. She wants me vibe. Why don't you have me now? Instead of getting around saying it's just doing it for things she's hard when she's really not. Are you finished? Yes. Stand there. Why did I move you? Because I don't want you to get in trouble there. Cos you're a nice person, but at the moment you're revved up. So I moved you to calm you down, then you don't get any trouble. Well, she's telling on the year 11 she's going to ban me, so obviously they're coming up to me and telling me, and obviously I'm going to go mad. Caitlin, please take a deep breath. Please relax. Please sit down. It, it's like an emotional roller coaster. this. I've gone from tears to absolute anger. Now we're happy, now we're laughing at these. I have no idea what's going on here. Well, how do I? No, we can't have a blowing up like that. She, she's getting to the stage now where we just don't know what to do with her. And if we don't come up with something soon, then it's not going to end well. I cannot have you put yourself under pressure by being like this around school. I am not going home. I want my education. Hang on, we're going through these emotions again. Sit down and relax. Does my head in though? Sit down and relax. <sighs> Ladies. Oh. <laughs> right, leave it with me, don't panic. All right then. Okay, thanks for ringing. Right, bye. Bye. Right, bye. She slept at Jamie's last night. She just rung her mum and said, I'm coming home, I'm going to school, I've got a rash. No, don't think so. Don't think so, love. I've just had a lovely present of my daughter. Yeah. She sent me all these things in a big box from Moon Pig. Oh. Didn't even think you could do that. 
Why do you never get a service in this shit school? Oh, I'm coming home and I'm never ever coming in this school again. So you can tell the teachers, just shove it up their ass. It's midday. Year 11 Cody is a familiar face to the student development team, known for her poor attendance. You just get moaned at all the time. Just like being my own person and doing what I want to do. I'm dropping out of school. Right, let me talk to you, Cody. Come with me. Sir, you're really not going to change my mind. No, no, but let me just no talk to you. No point whatsoever. Well, just come and talk to Come in here a minute. Today, she's decided she wants to leave school for good. Cody, listen, you really, really, really need to think this through. And I actually do want to leave. Yeah, but why throw it away at this last stage? Because I come in school to get shit all the time. OK. And who gives you the shit? It's either teachers or people yeah. in my year that I don't get on with. And I can't be asked OK. It. You've got to make that decision. But honestly, trust me, when you leave here, you are going into a very difficult world where you're going to need everything that you possibly can to equip you for the rest of your life. And if that is just a handful of GCSEs, that might make the difference for you, Cody. It's the ultimate sales pitch, isn't it? You've got to convince that young person into making the right decision. It is as simple as one decision. Either way, it's going to change your life. What difference does it actually make to my life whether you stay or not? It doesn't. It doesn't, does it? So why am I having this conversation with you? I don't know. Well, if you were my daughter in the same position at her school, I would want somebody to have this conversation with her if I couldn't get through to her. It's a waste of five years of your life. You're just throwing five years of your life down the toilet. I cannot just sit back and watch you make a decision that's going to negatively impact massively on the rest of your life. I just want to make sure you understand how important this understand. is. And is it going to make a difference that you understand? That's my question. What time's your grandpa coming for you? Mm -hmm. Right. Think about it. <coughs> Cody, she can be a tear away. When I was younger, I could play with them, you know, uh, mess about, you know, with toys and what have you. Cody now, she's getting that, that stage with being a teenager and she makes things difficult, so sometimes I can't cope. Oh. Hi, is that Nicola? Yeah, you're right. Hey, it's Miss Kay from school. I'm just wondering if I can nip round this afternoon about half past one. All right. All right okay. See you, see you later. Bye. 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 With the GCSEs nearing, the school are concerned that Mia is missing an increasing amount of lessons. Got a cup of tea. I'll have a glass of juice if you've got one. Yeah. Thank you. So. Obviously, there's a bit of an issue with Mia coming to school at the moment. Yeah. Um, that is affecting the grades, Nicola. If you have a look, maths, science, and then that science, and then ICT, she's below target for them. Obviously, she's got midwife appointments and things yeah. like that. Because she normally tells me and when not, they are. Her appointments are normally, like, early, early sometimes in the, day. In the yeah. morning, but yeah. But it's important when she's had a midwife appointment that she comes in school after it and not yeah. have a day off. She's not good with her attendance. Last year, I got took to court and £360 fine and 80 hours community service for me and not going to school. So it's just a case of looking at what she's behind in. When you're a single parent and you've got other two kids to look after and you're going to work, it is hard because I'd be up in the morning at half past six screaming, shouting and trying to get her up for school. And I've said to her, you know, you need to go to school to do your work and not be like I was. I know what it's like. And I'm telling you now, when you're older and you sat there in your flat, you'll wish you'd have gone back years and done it different to how you've done it now. That's what you're behind in. That's for your subjects, where you should be up to. Because obviously your attendance hasn't been the best, but I know you're going to make the effort. You just need to come in school every single day. What are you pulling your face for? <laughs> that's, that's reasonable, that. As long as you feel able to come in school without taking the mickey, that's the most important thing, yeah? 
You need to keep telling me when your midwife appointments are. And then if it's early in the morning, you need to come in in the afternoon, though, Mia. You can't have all day off, really. Um, and you need to stop ignoring me when I come round, because I know what you do. She's got to prove to people that even though I'm 16 and I've got a baby, I've gone back to school, I've done my exams, I've got my results, and now I'm in college. And she'll prove everybody wrong for the people that said she won't do it. And she will do it. I know she'll do it. Fingers crossed. What date are you due, Mia? 6th of March. Four days before her 16th birthday. Oh, she might come on your birthday. That'll be good. You might have to share your birthday. I said that. That's your birthday yeah, present. Yeah, forevermore. Chambers to student development team, please. I'm, I'm going to send Connie down. She's got a protractor stuck on her hand. Cannot wait for that. Ah. I've actually got it stuck in there. I don't know how you've done that. Can you pull that thing ah. down a bit? Why would you do so? Things like that. Ah. Oh, it's like your granddad. Yeah. Going for both. Hey, I'm Mrs. Canino. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's fine. That was her. Yeah, fine. Following Cody's threat to leave school, her granddad has been called in to speak to deputy heads Mrs. Benigno and Mr. Ross Povey. Where we're at today, just so that you know why you've been asked to come in, she's saying she doesn't want to be here. <clears throat> she's not following our instructions in terms of going into lessons, so she's just. Well, that's, that is the truth. This is what does my head in. Cody, it's not hard. All you've got to do is just settle down. Try and get on with it, whether you I like it or not. A day in and day out to get shit, and none of the teachers do anything. That's what annoys me. But sometimes you're coming in with the attitude. Aren't I'm not. You? Teachers just moan at me for nothing, which then puts me in a mood, and they don't expect anything back. We understand mm. that she's not perfect, not, nor are we, and she'll have the odd blip, and we get that. But we can't have her wandering the corridors and no. just not being in lessons because it's not. No. It's not really safe. I understand, you know, but. Deep down, she is a good girl. Oh, definitely. Yeah. I mean it. I know she can be cheeky. I know she can be boisterous. But you see, they don't understand what she's been through in her in her life. With losing her mother for one, that plays mm -hmm. on her mind a lot. Every time he looks at me, he sees my mum. He tells at me all the time. He'll tell me, like, when she was in school, she was clever, so he wants me to be like her. When my daughter was 30, well, she turned 30 in December, and she died in March. And that, that excuse me, I'm sorry. She was ill for a long while, for nearly a month. And then we got a phone call saying, you better get here now, because I don't think your daughter's going to make it. That was it. She'd gone. That's how we got Cody and Thomas. We was the only family that they had, and I brought them up as my own children. This girl does a lot for me. She makes sure that I'm OK. She can be like that yeah. here. Absolutely. Just give her the chance. I mean, I weren't a, a big school fan when I was her age. Mind you, I left school before when I was 15. Don't take after me. We went through your grades early. You're on, you, you predicted some pretty strong results. B's and C's in a lot of subjects. Just get down, do your, do your work, and then... Everybody will be happy. I'll give school one last try, and that is it. I'm sorry for all the, the bother, but all I can do is, like, use my best yeah. as I can. Thanks, you know. Thank you. Yeah. No problem. Cheers. Thank you. Right, so tomorrow, new day, fresh start, yeah? All right, then. Thank you. Thanks for Thank coming you. In. Bye Cheers. Now. You got eight beats, listen again. All four slow ones, so listen. Two, three, four. Yeah! Yay! 
What's your problem with it? Well, spies thinking they can say everything to me and then I just don't feel well. Oh, the trouble is, Caitlin, we've been through this so many times. It's mid-morning, and Year 8 Caitlin is refusing to go to her next lesson. I know you don't want to, but that's what we've got to do. I'll tell you straight, I've had enough of you. There's always tears, and then there'll be laughter, and then I've had enough. Well, it's not my fault, is it, that there's people in this school that are angry? But you're not giving us a chance, are you? <laughs> She, she's getting to the stage now. She won't go into a lesson. I think it's maybe time to look at another approach because we're getting pretty desperate now. Obligado. Don't start that. Oh, that's my only word I know. <laughs> well, it's very I, impressive. Get I, out. I could say two big beers in Portuguese many years ago. I learned it in 26 languages. <laughs> With Caitlin's behaviour becoming unmanageable, the school are elevating her supervision to the head of Year 8, Mr Ince. Caitlin has a good relationship with Mr Ince. If she can spend a bit of time with him and see if she can overcome these emotions that she's going through, get her refocused and get her, get her back on track learning. She's quite mouthy in lesson, isn't she? I've picked up it's corridor issues where she's meeting up with friends and yeah. then something's happening. Yeah. They know it. They know how to press the buttons. She reacts yeah. to things very quick. They yeah. know that. People no. expecting yeah. her. Yeah. to act in a certain way, where she's actually only a 12-year-old girl. Yeah, she? and she's the eldest in yeah. a large family. And it probably is quite a loud home yeah. as well that she comes from. Go get in. Go the dog now. Oh, the dog. Yeah. The dog. Careful, break everything. Eat cheese and lemon Caitlin's the oldest of five brothers and sisters. I think as the oldest child, when the younger ones need a lot of attention as well, I think she's struggling there to, to get that attention. Right, we'll put it away now. Please, put it away now. Would you like to have an older brother or sister? Yeah. Just so they can look up to them and not me. Because, you know, I don't want them to look up to me. There you go. All done. Are you a good role model? No. I'm not, and I'm not. They're good, and I'm not. Up the stairs. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, I need to speak to Caitlin about school. She's been in trouble. Right. Caitlin has phoned me. What's happened? Why more trouble? It weren't my fault. I'm not saying it is your fault, but there's more trouble again, and you're being brought into it. When I was at school, I was naughty. I just don't want my kids to be that way. I've been constantly drumming into Caitlin that she needs to knuckle down, get her work done. She's the one that's telling me that she wants to be a nurse and she wants to do this and she wants to do that. So I've told her that she needs to knuckle down and get the grades that she needs to get. Right, guys, coats off, please. Let's get to where we need to be. Thank you. I'm not going in. I'm telling Miss Kay. Will you come with me, please? Miss Kay! Miss K, Miss K, if she ignores me one more time, Miss K, I need you. Shall we go through here? Yeah, of course. Cody is back in school following yesterday's meeting. What have you done? What, has she cut herself? Is that what you come to tell me? Show me. Yeah, yeah, stand there, Libby, stand there, stand there. Have you done it on your other arm? Yeah. All right, 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 right. right. You have to not be shocked. You know, I'm not encouraging her to do it, but then I don't want her to think that I'm horrified. Ah, it hurts. Oh, that needs cleaning cord. I know, I can't do it now. If I'm like, oh, God, what have you done? Then next time she might not come and tell anyone, which could be worse. Yeah. Do you want to do it or do you want me to do it? No, you do it. Tell me if I hurt you. Still a bit, they're bleeding a bit, aren't they? Yeah. Not the stinging. When did you do that, Coda? This morning? It's last night. Was it clean what you used? Yeah. I tell her, I said, don't do things like that. I said, I've been there, I've done it myself. 
I said, you're a beautiful girl, you've no need to do that. You know, you just put everything to your back of your mind and think of something else rather than that. But she gets upset, and I think a lot of that is due to losing her mother. Come March, it's 14 years, you know, since she, she passed away. People that I know come up to me and say, your granddaughter ain't half like your Sandra, ain't she? You know, I say, yes, I say, she's got the same temperament as well. And I'll tell you something now. When Cody was young, I, I used to have a cabinet there, and in, in, in the cabinet I had this figure of Elvis, and it sang Love Me Tender. And I used to put her on my knee, and she'd fall asleep listening to it. She, that was the only thing that I'd get Cody to sleep, was Love Me Tender. You know, because Cody's a very, very lively girl. She's got to be on the run all the time. Don't feel better? Apparently last night she was really upset at home and she said she just kept thinking about school and stressing over everything that she's missed and what she has to catch up on. And she did self-harm, which okay. obviously was a concern for us this morning when we saw her. She's very vulnerable, isn't she? Mm. Very clearly very vulnerable. Yeah. She said she feels like she just can't deal with a full timetable right now. OK. I think maybe she should drop history. She's being predicted an E. I know Mr Taylor's already talked to me about the fact that she's missed a lot because she was obviously... Her attendance last term wasn't always great. OK. If a child comes to you and speaks to you about the fact that they've got issues of self-harm, we pass all the information on to the relevant people, safeguarding team, most likely make contact with home, inform parents, carers. We refer the young person to CAMS, which is our child and adolescent mental health service, so that that child's got a network of support around them. I'll bring you down there in a few minutes. Oi, downstairs, stop messing downstairs. For the next two weeks, Caitlin will be under the supervision of Mr Ince. Mr Ince is working hard to make it work for her, and he, he has a brilliant relationship with her. I've got an obsession with, you know, with saying something. Why are you putting your hand up? Go on. Yeah. Where are we going now? He sees a lot in her, and he's good for her, and, you know, she listens. She'll be placed on report so the school can track her progress. Right, so she's got a report. Yeah. She knows where she's going. Yeah. Got a timetable, sir? No. Stick it on the back of there. Cheers, miss. These are the best things with school oh, results. No. Oh. <laughs> you took my face off, eh? Oh, that would have been funny. That would have been, wouldn't it? Would have. Oh, so God. tell me now, how are we going to resolve this issue down um, the line? How do I what? Yeah, but tell me how, though, because being good is a massive area. I am going to listen, listen to the listen. teachers. What is the big issue, do we feel? Um, that I'm talking over the teachers all the time. What else? That what? I react dead quick what and else? I let things get worse than the actual is. Exactly. Bell's gone! Right, get yourself a chair and sit right to the back. It's dead straight, but in a good way. If you get what I mean. Apparently, I listen to him. Right, OK! Shh. Caitlin is 100% a lovely girl. She just needs to be guided. Uh, she wants to do well. She just needs to be given the frame to be able to do that. Climate change, is it a natural phenomena? Or is it a man-made phenomena? <laughs> All right? I like saying that word. It's a good word, isn't it? Yeah, that. Mr Ince and Mr Chambers, they're trying their best to keep me in the school. Right, hands up if you think you've learned something today. Well done, team. Close your books up, please. Caitlin, get the glues, please. Excuse me. Can I have that glue, please? Thank you. Have a lovely weekend, guys. See you next week. Caitlin will stay on report until her behaviour changes. Good. Be nice to finish on a Friday with a one raid, wouldn't it? What does that mean? Well, if anybody's got a one, can go home early. Oh, I just... I don't even touch me. <laughs> right, come in. I'm dead proud of you, though, that you've come in. I really am. 
because I didn't think he was going to, you know. Cody has been referred for regular sessions with the school counsellor. And you say how you feel, and how do you feel? Be honest with me now. I just feel shit all the time. Do you? And school don't make it any better. That's why I don't like school. To walk through that door is a massive thing in itself. There's a lot of shame that goes with it. So a young person, that, that's so hard to actually come out and say, I'm feeling this way about myself. That was self harm. Was you doing it, obviously, when you got home because of pressures of school? Or just in general, just everything's going? Nothing had happened, but I'd still, like, find a way to make myself feel like shit. So then I'd just do it. We could just have some one-to-one -one work. Because we don't want you doing that, do we? She's very misunderstood. She would come across that she does not care and she doesn't need you and she doesn't want you in her life. But actually, she's screaming and shouting something very different inside. And I think if you can tap into that, that's where um, you get to know Cody. She's a great kid. I'm just used to effing and jeffing and shouting and laughing and joking and always being crackers. We're allowed, to, we're allowed to feel like this sometimes as well. We all do, even adults, you know. We're allowed to have their moments, but you need to think to yourself now how to come out and talk about it. It isn't easy. So I don't want to push anything on you at the moment other than just be there. From year seven, we've had your moments, but to me, to get to year 11 is an achievement in itself sometimes, isn't it, when it's been difficult. So I want to be able to see you today and kind of be a proud of you, because you've done Dad well. So we take it day as it comes, we'll have a brew in the mornings or whatever, and then we go from every day and we'll just see. Yeah? Thank you, Boris. <sighs> you okay? Yeah. Come on, gorgeous. You'll find that with most young people, the, the ones that couldn't stand school, don't want to be here, will always be the ones nearer that last few months will kind of melt down because that safety net, that continuity goes. Did we say you're going to do science today? You just do a bit of work so you're not completely behind. Yeah? All right, that's fine. Now, you're getting back, washing, and your bum gone big. Yeah. Go on, get in, I'll go. Oh, my God. <laughs> Are you in? Yeah. Get your seatbelt around you, Mia. Mia's attendance still isn't improving. This time, severe stomach cramps have kept her at home. The midwife said her head's engaged and she could come at any time now. Yeah, it's fine. You're not scared? No. Not one bit scared. It's going to hurt you. You do know it's going to kill. <laughs> <laughs> Is that your response? <laughs> no, it just steps some crisp. <laughs> With the OK from the doctor, she's heading back to school. At this crucial time, you're getting pressure from parents, pressure from school. In particular with Mia, because she is pregnant, she's getting good GCSEs. To get on the course that she wants to do is really important. And I think I've got that across to her, to be honest. Hopefully, touch wood. On va faire un peu de répétition. Comme on dit ça, répétition en anglais. Repetition together, yeah? Ensemble, on va aller un chat. It's 11.30, and Mia has come to the student development office in pain. You feel sick or anything? Are you hungry? With her due date approaching, she's feeling unable to stay in lessons. Is it pain there all the time? She sounds like a stitch, doesn't it? Stop pressing it. Oh, you're rubbing it. <laughs> it looks like you're pressing it dead hard. Don't want to ring your mum. I'll text you, Mum. Hey, Nicholas, Michelle. Mia's got a pain in the ribs. Whilst she was very excited in the beginning about being pregnant, she felt unwell quite a lot of the time. The reality of getting bigger, feeling sick, not being able to eat, that definitely took its toll on Mia. Because, you know, she's 15. She's having a baby. It's a bit of a shock to the system. I told my Mum I'm not having one of them big needles in my back. I don't like needles. I read on the internet that they can... That they can paralyse you as well. And... That's very rare. No, That's very know. rare. I had my first child when I was 17. I ended up with three children before I was 21. 
So I think having that experience helps as well because I can relate to the kids. So she knows that she can talk openly in her room and when she's got a bit of backache and things like that. And I think that's really important. Being in school is stressing you out. I can tell. I can tell it really is. We want to do what's best for you and your little bambino. So, how would you feel if you were allowed to stay at home between now and giving birth? We make sure you have all the revision stuff and then you come in and do your exams. That's the way forward, yeah? I think I'd be able to concentrate more doing my work at home, I know yeah. for a fact I would. Yeah. Do you want me to have a chat with your mum about it, or do you...? I'll tell her. And then we'll make sure you have visits at least twice a week, and then you can go home and have a rest and love. Well, can I ring my mum to see yeah. where she is? Yeah. Use the bat phone. Sure. Obviously, Mia's going to want to be with the baby, and I can thoroughly understand that. I've discussed that with Mia. Her mum's happy to babysit. She knows when the exams are. Hello? Hello, Mum. Yeah? I can come home. What? I'm allowed to come home. Who you said you're allowed to come home? Miss Kay. She thinks I'm telling lies. She's not telling lies to you. My worry is when Mia's had the baby that she won't return for exams. So our priority is making sure she knows that to give her little baby girl a really good life, getting good GCSEs, is really important. Bloody freezing and all that much. I am going to Rome, though. Rub it in. It's all right. Going to Rome. You rub it in. And I'm going it's from okay. Rome to Crete. Rub it in more, thanks. Mr Ince is my, uh, what you call it, travel guide. Oh, is he now? Oh, yeah, I get all my advice off Mr Ince for travel. What, because he's a geography teacher? So I'm going to Rome for five nights. Good advice. Then I'm going on... Oh, he's brilliant, Mr Ince. I'm a geography teacher, I can give you good advice. As well. Benny Dom. <laughs> Ace. Ace. <laughs> The first question between 12 and 1 says, what is an ecosystem? If you don't have that in your books, I'm going to put it on the board very Why clear for you. The lamp's just warming up. First of all, Caitlin, tell me a plant adaptation in the rainforest. Oh, my God, let and me why. have one first. Uh, lion, uh, that, that, that lioness one. Lianas? Yes, wrap up trees. To reach the sun. Why, do, why do lianas wrap up the trees? Because to reach the, the most sunlight, fantastic. Right, somebody tell me a animal adaptation. Put your hand up, please. I will. To get up on, yeah. So I want me slowly to um, to stop attack. Yes. After a week on report, Caitlin is making progress. Ladies and gentlemen, can I have all the boxes in the front, please? Take your worksheet home to have advise. You, have you started my report quick? Caitlin, worked really well today. Well, thank you. Well, thank you. Okay. Got one. Thank you for that. There's Mr. Rinter, and he's showing this. I got a board last lesson. Right, well Man. done. You pleased? Yeah. Right, can I just say, you've done well, OK? You've impressed me this last few weeks, but they, every day is a journey, and every day you've got to be putting the graft in. All right? Get back to class, OK, before break, How, all right? What hour is that? Five minutes. All right? See you later. See you later. I see a big change in Caitlin since the first meeting I had with her a good number of weeks ago now. She, she's on that journey. How, how long that journey will take, I don't know, but she's doing really well. Na na, don't act like you know me, like you know me, na na. Listen up, please push on and test yourself. Stretch yourself a little bit. It's two months until her GCSEs, and Cody is back in lessons. Cody, keep going with them. I don't get it, these ones. All right, so what goes in between there if there's nothing there? Time. It's a time, so what's opposite the times? So She's also receiving long-term counselling support. So the next one. X equals Y divided by... It's all right. You got it? Well done. I just feel more confident with my work and stuff compared to what I used to be like. I think sometimes what spurs me on in school is like, knowing I'm doing my granddad proud. Got it? So if a power is a root, a route is there. So what she's on a part-time timetable, but she's asking for extra work and she's ripping in and she's coming to see me and she's asking questions. And she's in a good place and we've got to keep her there. We've got to give her every chance we can and I just keep checking in on her. And uh, she's doing all right. You know, fingers crossed she can keep it going. Nailed it. We have nailed this today. Hold on. Not gonna lie, I need a vodka. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, this week, this, this past two days, I'm visualising that pint of beer tonight and that curry. Oh! Happy birthday, my... Caitlin! What are your plans for your birthday? Meant to be having a party tomorrow, but loads of bells came out rules bank and now she had a party. What kind of party are we supposed to be having, Caitlin? Disco oh. dome. We never had disco domes in my day. Certainly day. did never not. Even, never yeah. even That's the parcel when I was 13. Yeah. yeah. I've just been punched in the arm about 50 times. That's well, what they do on your that birthday. That is what they do on your birthday. You couldn't tell anyone when it was your birthday, could you? It was eggs and flour. Mind you, I've got to say, nobody ever threw an egg at me. Oh, they no. <laughs> no, they never punched me. Would well, you want a happy meal? But you've got to be happy. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, Hartford students. Next time. What is it? A production? There's high drama. Don't tell anyone. As two year 11s. Oh, I hate school! Find their identity. I started wearing makeup three years ago. It defies your face. Oh, where's the mirror? Do my eyebrows look okay? I've always been one of the lads. They all think, oh, it's all singing and dancing, and then just laugh. He's on Tinder. What's, what's Tinder? Sorry. Dating yeah. websites. Do you see pictures? Oh.